What's up, YouTube? This is Hector. This is Drew. And we're from Not Too Nerdy Entertainment. Today is episode 17 of our podcast, and as always, we're going to be talking about games that we did in the past. We're going to start out with Drew's game, which is Secret World. Then we're going to follow it up by the game that I did, which is Deadlight for uh, Xbox 360. So uh, let's go straight into it. All right, so I uh, played the Secret World for the month of July. So we're over the uh, drought, finally. And you sound, eight, sound kind of bored. Then I, what happened with the Secret World? <laughs> I really wish there were some games coming out. Maybe the Guild Wars came out in July. <laughs> or Torchlight 2 or something like that. But uh, it was pretty empty. Uh, so I just you know had to play the Secret World for the month of July. Um, some other games, but... Uh, uh, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. I think the main thing with The Secret World is I feel like they had something where they marketed it as something different to, you know, traditional MMOs as far as the setting, the story, and uh, the way that you progress your character. But at the end of the day, it felt like every other MMO out there in terms of the baseline gameplay. So, you know, first off the bat, uh, you know, this game is developed by Funcom. So they're, you know, like a veteran MMO developer out there. So it's not like they don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, they had Age of Conan game, Anarchy uh, Online, and, uh, you know, that Longest Journey is another game that they did as well. But you can see some different elements they had from that. That's a point-and-click adventure game. But, um, you know, as far as when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, it really felt like, you know, your standard MMO where you're just grinding in order to progress, you know, the story. And it just got really repetitive and boring after a while. I mean, the great thing I did like about it, I felt the uh, cutscenes for the story was uh, pretty interesting. You know, this game takes place in like a modern day setting. So, uh, you play uh, either as one of three factions. You have the Illuminati. You have Illuminati! The... <laughs> <laughs> I hate to hear that, we gotta say that. <laughs> My mom's so Illuminati! <laughs> You got the uh, dragon, they're like an Asian Templar, what, not Templar, a triad type of game. We got Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, that's what I was like, a triad. It's like, a, we got a game coming up for that game, right? Yeah, uh, they'll probably do a better uh, interpretation of that. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the Templars, uh, Assassin's Creed, so, you, you know, that kind of organization. They're all basically like secret societies. So, um, the, the bad thing about that, though, was like, the three factions, they start off in di different areas uh, where you start off, but at the end of the day, like, I played uh, the Illuminati for the beta and then I played the Templar. At the end of the day, you, go, you get up to the same location and the story progresses the same exact way. You start off uh, this place called Kingsmith Town. Mm. It's kind of like a New England uh, based town and it has like all these references to uh, like Stephen King books and H.P. Lovecraft and all this other stuff like that. And you know, you got zombies. Uh, you know, attacking the world. So it seemed interesting at first, but then, you know, when you get down to the brass tacks of what the game is about, it's just like every other MMO, you know, you're spamming your number buttons and, you know, you gotta level up your character. Even though there aren't no levels, which was interesting, it still feels like you're leveling up a character because you every, every time you did a quest, you would get experience points, you dump it into new skills and, you know, different abilities and so forth. But uh, the whole entire thing with the game is like, oh, there's not going to be any level grinding. But then you go to do certain quests, and there's like, oh, you're not uh, high enough to enter this quest. And I'm like, not high enough? I thought there was no levels. Okay. It just didn't make sense. I mean, I did like the story aspect of it. Like, the uh, characters were, you know, kind of, you know, self-aware and had some, like, clever things to say. Like, there's a lot of breaking the fourth wall and... Um, like, that makes references to other different games. Like, one character saying, I learned how to kill zombies from Left 4 Dead. You got another character, uh, other characters like these, uh, I think they were, like, corporate agents. They're talking about Star, uh, Star Trek and all this other stuff. Like, it's just a lot of, like, co like kooky stuff, like, going on. But, um, as far as, like, the way the game is structured, it's, I, what I really didn't like was that most of the content, um, was a uh, solo instance. So you, you, you're playing an MMO, but your, soul, your whole entire story you have to play by yourself, which I really didn't understand why they chose to do that. And it's not even like I played like Star Wars where like you would have your own story missions, but people could still come in your story missions. They just couldn't progress their story because, you know, of course it would intersect with whatever's going on in their story, which makes sense. But this, you couldn't even bring them in. So I'd be in a party with someone, 
and I go in to do my story mission, and we get separated, even though we were on the same exact quest in the story. See, that's that's a game MMO. It should not be like that. MMO should be. It's a massively yeah. multiplayer online game. Oh, that's what it stands for. Oh, that's what Chris like. Oh, that's what it stands for. And, and, and know what made this game so bad too was that in the middle of playing it, uh, the Guild Wars beta happened. So I played that game, and I'm like, wow, this makes this game look like complete shit. Yeah. Like it, like. Guild Wars is like the best MMO I think I've ever now played. Now you know why it's yeah. so hard and so expensive to make MMO yeah. because and, it's uh, you know, <laughs> and and like it's unbelievable. Like after this, like I'd be very surprised if any MMO comes out and not be free to play. Because hmm. even freaking Star Wars, which was the second biggest one, has gone free to play, there, which is like yeah, unbelievable. There, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> and it's like you know when you uh, cancel the game, they're like, why'd you cancel? I'm like, you know, this probably should be free to play. Well. <laughs> The thing is, like, all those, you're not going to really see too many that will go straight out free to play. They're going to do what Star Wars did. They're going to wait a couple months and then go to it. So they can make as much as they can and then go to free to play. And then they'll make it a different way. But I understand why don't they just do the Guild Wars route where, you know, the the box product costs $50 and then you just don't pay a subscription fee after that. All right, there's a guy called George Lucas that cares about money. And it... I'm sure to have that name trademarked Star mm-hmm. Wars, mm-hmm. it's cost a lot of money. Mm-hmm. On top of just normal money from MMO, you have to worry about licensing and all that other stuff. Yeah, they have to make money first before they could yeah. do that. Like, I just think that like at that point, it's like if they can't make it, who, who's gonna be able to do no, it? No, they they made a decent amount though. They yeah. made money, like, and they're gonna mm-hmm. still make money even free to play. Like they'll yeah, still yeah. make it. Out of oh time yeah, I think they'll make money. Yeah. I just I think that everyone see, just sees cap, uh, dollar signs when they see MMO. Yeah, I'm but the thing is, they, they did what everyone else does with Star Wars, uh, before we get sidetracked too much, like, they <laughs> did what everyone else does with Star Wars, they used the name, and regardless, you're a diehard, once you're a diehard fan, you get it just because it says Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. You could care, you might not even play all the time, you did yeah. it because of Star Wars, and that's it. Well, I think a lot of people buy Bioware, too. Uh, yeah. I, that's why I knew it was a good developer attached to it, so. Yeah. I, but, you know, I'll definitely go back to it, but. Let's, let's, well, let's, let's go back to the other crap. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, the other, the other uh, MMO. The crap <laughs> MMO. So, you know, what makes this game different besides the setting? Um, it, you know, you, you, you do travel different locations. Like you, like I said, Kingdom is Town. It's like a New England town. You have New York. You have London. You have Egypt. You have Transylvania, which has like vampires and werewolves and all that stuff like that. And it's an interesting setting. But as far as like the baseline gameplay, what I really didn't like... Um, was that it's really, like, there's no sense of progression, I felt. Since there are no levels, it's like, you know, I play MMO to basically, I want to max out that character, you know, I want to hit that level 50 or, you know, whatever it is, depending on the game, and, you know, then just do it, like, end content. But, like, well, like I don't understand what your reason would be for the game, because basically the way it works is you get seven skills, um, active and seven passive, and you can use any of those skills, and you just level up. You know, you, I keep saying level up, even though there's no levels, but it's it's basically leveling up. I think it's because of that reason. There is no <laughs> ending to it, and I think yeah. that that's what they're going for. Because some people like that that they never end, that they can put it in the game and they never end. But, there's, the, but there's the thing though, like I feel like it, it takes away the self the sense of accomplishment, accomplishment of, yeah. of doing something. Yeah. So where like what is the end content for this game when you feel like you you've reached the end content of this game like. Because you just keep going, like, you, you have no level cap. I know, like, essentially you can do it because there's only a set number of skills that you can acquire in the game, but, like, who's going to spend you, the time you, to do that? You talk about the U.S., where mm-hmm. they have soap operas that it's been going on for, like, 30 freaking years yeah. or more, and there's no ending to it, like, mm-hmm. and people watch it. But, like, you go to other countries and stuff like that, they have endings to soap operas and stuff like that. It's, yeah, like, yeah. the same thing. Like, like the, you, some people just like... The fact that it never ends, you get your money's worth. Every day, it's, it could be something different. It happens. It could slight. It could be almost the same, but slightly different. Something mm-hmm. happened different from the day before. Yeah. And, but, and I understand that, but I think at the end of the day, what really drives like MMOs, what makes something like WoW like stay around for so long and be so popular is the whole and, and games like Diablo too is the whole entire loop aspect yeah. of the game it's where people up. Where, where people like even if they do like max out their level, they're always trying to achieve that new gear, you know, to show off to their friends. And the problem with this game is that, much like DC Universe, if you ever play that game, um, all, all the stuff that you get is not cosmetic. Like, you can, um, you know, I like that you can uh, customize your character to get them the way you look, but the stuff that you collect in the game, uh, you can't show off. Like, there's no, like, armor system in the game. 
it's like all cosmetic, you know. So you you'll you'll pick up items and like you don't feel like your character is progressing or becoming different. So it's like, what is the point? Like if the loot grab isn't grabbing me, you know, the story is you know good, but it's not worth seeing through. And after you finish the story, what are you gonna do after that? You know, it's just uh, it's too much samey. I think at the end of the day, I felt like. They had a chance to make it very innovative. I mean, there are some innovative aspects of it, like to say the point and click uh, aspects of the game. Like, you have like certain aspects where you can look up um, like different uh, books in the environment and stuff to get like different uh, hints for puzzles. Mm -hmm. And then you're supposed to use the in-game web browser to look up the the like the hints for the puzzle mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But they really messed that up because. I, what ended up happening was, or you know, oh, I try this out, I'll try to figure it out, yeah. and then what would I end up doing? I use the web browser, go to the forums, and look up the answer itself, because it's like, what's the point? If you're, I'm already going to the internet out of the, you know, good thing it's in the game, but I'm already out of the game to look something up. Might as well just look for the answer. What's so you got like straight up porn rolling down there as you're playing? I, I, I don't know. I, I see people have a flash player. The, the funny thing is, I've watched people at, play this game and I laugh because I know this is not what the developer had in mind, like. They had people could watching walkthroughs of other people while in the game <laughs> to figure out what to do, and that's just like a sign of a bad game when it comes to puzzle design. Because people are just looking, and they're like, "Oh well, at least I don't have to, you know, exit out of my, the game and go on YouTube. I'll just go in the game on YouTube." Like that just shows to like they messed it up. Like it just didn't make sense. That's you know? funny. It, it, it's 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 a real shame because I think it was really cool that they had like a point and click adventure type of, you know, aspect of the game, but the end of the day, like, when you make things easy like that for people to just go look it up inside the game, then most people, I think they're just going to do that. It just doesn't make sense to do anything otherwise. So at the end of the day, I would say, you know, this game is going to be free to play. I mean, every single MMO out there is, is going to be free to play, uh, I think, you know, except WoW, who's going to stay so around for as long as possible, so. Bottom line, you think they should uh, wait? Yeah, so wait. Do not buy, pay fifty dollars for this game, even though you do get a free month. Wait, it's gonna eventually become free to play. So try it out then. But even then, I mean, wait for Guild Wars too. I mean, you're really gonna enjoy that experience a lot more than you would enjoy this. I think uh, th it was a good time for this game to come out because nothing was out. But you know, that's pretty much it as far as it had to, as an advantage. Like everything else, it's pretty much the same. It's just a unique setting and you know a decent story. Pretty much it. That's cool. So uh, I can jump into my game. The I played uh, Deadlight for uh, Xbox 360 or Xbox Live Arcade, if you want to say it like that. Um, this game had all the makings of a good game. Yeah. You know, it had it had um, the the trailer made it look so suspenseful. The way the artists designed yeah. it, they made it look. They drew perfect characters. Made it look like a comic book. Uh, in the cutscenes, you know, they had everything that made it look official, like a, a game that could compete with the Walking Dead uh, downloaded game, and they failed in my book. They failed in my book with so many aspects. So I'm gonna just start from the beginning. There's so much that I can say about this game. I'm gonna start with the beginning about the story. All right, you play as a character named Randall throughout the whole story. Um, in the beginning, you're set in uh, Seattle, Washington, during like uh, 1980, like around 1980s, and uh, the whole thing is it's sort of like a zombie apocalypse, which is not unique whatsoever. No. We all been there, we've seen it, like not been there, but been there in so many different stories. We yeah. were able to see so many different stories their mm -hmm. their take on, and this one is no exception. There's nothing unique about it. That that right away is a bad thing where you don't try to separate yourself somehow. They didn't. Um, uh, by the way, they're not called zombies in this game. They're called the Shadows. Um, they're trying to do like what Walking Dead did, where they call them walkers in Walking Dead. They're calling them the Shadow or Shadows. Mm -hmm. So the whole story is is confusing. I the story made no sense. The story is jumping all over. And then even Drew, when we were talking about before, Drew was saying that he felt like it's three different games. Yeah. Like three separate games, and I, I just felt like it was just a different scenes. So you what, what, what are some of the story, um, you know, techniques that they use just so people have a frame of reference? 
Like there's the kind of like comic book art style yeah, like in between each scene. It, it, and... In between each scene, there's a cutscene. It may look like a comic book. Mm. It's frozen time, like slow animation, but it's not no one moving. It's comic book animation. Mm. The reason why I, that part I liked, that part made sense. That mm. part made it look unique, sort mm. of. And then it jumps in after the long loading time mm. to back to the game, and now you're playing like sort of. Uh, like characters in the shadow, like you really don't see their faces or anything. Like you just see them in the shadow in a distance, and it turns into a two D side scrolling game. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the problem with the two D side scrolling game. The characters in the background, certain things in the background are three D. They can move in three D world, but yet we can only move two D world. Right. That's a huge problem. I'll get to that in a second with game control. But the story itself bounces all over the place. In the beginning, Randall split up with his family. He says, you know, go ahead. He gives them the gun and everything, and he, he separates with them. And, like, he separates the group that he's with. And then all of a sudden, like, the whole story is he's trying to get back to them, but mm -hmm. yet there's certain things along the way that happens to him that he has to go through with and other It's cats. kind of the tried and true t thing where he kind of, like, he, he forgot something, he forgot memory or something yeah. like that. And he has, like, these pages he picks up, yeah. right? He, he has pages, like, diaries and a yeah. whole bunch of different... I picked up almost everything mm -hmm. up. And I read the diaries, and usually in games like this, the game that really started that, I have to say, was Resident Evil. I think Resident Evil started like all this, where you pick up the little like like a diary or something, and it's mm. something that was written in. You got to understand what happened, the umbrella yeah. and all that stuff. You got to yeah. see what happened. And I and I definitely think that what it would have been a better um, if they did like audio logs or something yeah. like that. That would have been yeah. a better way. It would have been better because that's kind of like the evolution of what that is. But it didn't make sense. It didn't, like, it didn't they make didn't sense relate either. to each other. Yeah. The diaries didn't relate to each other. They didn't even explain what happened previously. And all, most of the stuff you picked up in the game didn't make any sense. Like, yeah. I don't know if you noticed the IDs you picked yeah. up. Like, it was like serial killers or something. Like, it, was the, like, it made no sense. The, I was like, what the hell? The ID sort of, what they were trying to do in the story, mm -hmm. the show that, that the whole story is trying to be that in reality, that you save yourself. The whole thing is about that you are the enemy. Meaning that all the people like that, that turn bad and stuff like that, they're trying to show that they've done something bad in their life. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to show, the IDs and stuff like that. They're trying to show yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. But they failed at that. Like, I understood what they're doing, but the average person, the majority of people won't understand no. that that's what they're going for. And uh, the stories did not relate to each other. That's the thing that got me upset the diaries. They made no sense. Mm -hmm. And some of the diaries were about his life previously. Mm -hmm. Why would a diary say something... A, a random paper that you pick off the floor is going to say something about his life. Like, yeah. And what I didn't understand was it, it sections off to different like places. I didn't know if they were... I knew if they were flashing back or he was hallucinating. I just was confused as yeah, hell. I, he, was, he had flashbacks and he had dreams. Like, yeah. um, there's one scene. I'm going to describe a scene. Spoiler alert. Okay, This one scene. It's not really a big scene. There's an old man. It's called the rat. Okay. So right before uh, the old man saved him from a bunch of uh, shadows, if you want to call them, and he pulled him in, and all of a sudden it went straight into uh, a dream. And in this dream, he's like, I keep having this dream where um, I don't know whether I'm running away from something or running to something. And like you see him running the streets. And this is the same streets before all this apocalypse happened. He's running and he's running. Then he's like, and then I finally see my house and I get there. And then all of a sudden, that's where I always wake up once he opens the door. And as soon as he opened the door, he woke up and bam, that guy was there. Now, the dream is whatever. You're thinking that it's going to mean something later on, which you really never got to. They really didn't explain what the dream, the, the dream meant. Mm -hmm. So that got me upset. But then on top of it, you meet this character. They call him the rat. It's a very, very old man. Now, the old man is testing him. He wants to test him. So what does he do? He puts him through an uh, obstacle course, pretty much. Yeah. And... Uh, there's traps all over the place. Traps plus there's mm -hmm. shadow. And my biggest problem with that is there's not really. It's, this is a zombie game, but where the freaking zombies yeah. and they, when these traps are yeah. coming, right? And uh, the, the traps is just weird. He's testing you, and a lot of them, the whole throughout the whole game, this game was set up to be trial and error, mm -hmm. meaning that a lot of it were traps where you're going to die, and you just gotta remember the next time to jump over that spot yeah. or do something else because there's really not too much of a hint. Mm -hmm. If it's a hint, it's a small hint. And the point that I'm trying to make with this old man is that you did all of this stuff. And once you get to a spot, there's a part where you have to shout out for the old man's help. And he'll open a, a door or he'll, he'll open a, a different area for you to yeah, go through. Exactly. So my point is this. If the old man is testing you, why is he helping you? 
Mm -hmm. Then it's one or the other. Either he's testing you to see if you're strong enough to do something, or he's helping you throughout the whole. Yeah, and, and what really doesn't make sense is like you do all this stuff, and then he lets like down a bridge or something for you yeah. or something like that. And you're he, like, really? Why don't you just do that the entire time? Then? Exactly. It doesn't like, make any sense. It made no sense. And then after that, the whole purpose was this. I'll uh, just jump into it. The whole purpose, you're supposed to help the old man do something. I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah. I don't want to spoil it. You're supposed to help him do something. So all that was just a test to help him do something. I died 20 times in this test. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I think I got a, a D on the test. <laughs> I, I don't know if I failed, but I didn't do good on the test. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Right. And to me, I think what the biggest problem was is I feel like it was such a missed opportunity. And you know what? It, and they do a little bit of this, but... What they should have done, I think, is like, all right, this guy has this test for you, but these these traps should involve something to do with zombies. Like, oh, these zombies are coming up, and use the environment to get rid of the zombies because he takes away your weapons, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that was they were maybe they were trying to do, and they just they couldn't figure out ways to do it. I, I just don't get why they didn't do it that way. Why they choose to take out most of the zombies from that area and just. Have you traversing the environment with these like clunky controls? I mean. So right off the bat, the story was just didn't make sense. Story was, and the parts that did make sense were cliche to every yeah, yeah. zombie apocalypse. So it was nothing unique. Mm -hmm. So that that was already a problem in the game. Then we have another problem in the game, which is probably an even bigger problem than the story itself, and that's yeah. the control of the game. Yeah. Now the character Randall, when you jump, okay, the jump button is A. The Xbox Live, all right? Mm -hmm. If you're, say, if you're under a uh, fire escape or something, you gotta climb up the fire escape, right? You press A, you press up and A, so you jump straight up, all right? Now, if you're not directly under a fire escape, you press up and A, sometimes you can jump forward. Yeah. And it's not just that you jump forward, it's animated forward, meaning that once you press it, you have no control. It's not like you do mid air stop or try to mm -hmm. shorten the jump. You can't do anything. You have to wait till it's yeah. completely done with animation. And his animation will jump you pretty far. Mm -hmm. And not only when he jumps, he lands and he still takes a couple steps forward. It's not mm -hmm. like he lands and stops. He lands while he's still. And, moving and what drives me crazy about that is that all right, we played. We've all played platformers before. Yes. And right, and you get like a running start to jump, right? But what usually is it, right? It's like A. You hold down the A, and then you press A again to jump, right? Why does it have a separate sprint button like it's a? Third person shoot. <laughs> like, like that thing drove me that, crazy. That didn't get me upset as much because I'm like, fine, you could do that. That that's fair game, but it didn't work. And like the thing got me upset is this is a 2D side scrolling game. Mario, Super Mario got that right. In the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah, it's unnecessary to change it. That exactly. was the most accurate platformer jumping game ever. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about as one well the beginning. That's yeah. the beginning of platform and jumping, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me you you can't do that in 2012? And I think what it's obvious what they're not trying to do Mario. They're obviously trying to do the limbo type of style yeah. of platforming, but, which it doesn't work in this yeah, game. What they're trying yeah. it wasn't that they're trying to make it look even more realistic. That's mm -hmm. why it's animated. As soon as yeah. you press it, it's animated, and he doesn't stop. And that they're trying to make it like real life physics. But the mm -hmm. only problem with that is, who in the hell real life physics could be able to jump from here and jump mm -hmm. like 10 feet that way. So mm -hmm. it's already screwed up anyway, the mechanics. And also I had a lot of issues with um, like depth perception of knowing yeah. how far I could jump. Like sometimes you think like, oh, am I missing something? I have to put down in order to make this jump. And it's like, no, you just, you weren't running right or you weren't positioned right to make the jump, which the, is horrible. The funniest thing in the whole game, the funniest thing in the whole game is, right? It is hilarious. I'm playing the game and stuff like that. And later on in the game, they're like, oh, you can wall jump, all right? And the, but the, the only button that worked perfectly was wall jump. You can wall jump perfectly, but you yeah, can't yeah. jump normally. No. Like, it makes no sense. The wall jump mm. works. You could just tap off the wall and jump, turn around. He always he always lands right. Yeah. It, the wall jump works, but everything else does it. It, it just blows my mind. Yeah. And I think what, makes it the, what made it the most frustrating for me was... Like, I don't mind dying in a platformer. Like, Super Meat Boys is a perfect example. You die a million times. But it's instant load. You're right back. This game took, like, freaking 30 seconds to load, it seemed like, for me. It was driving me nuts. And it's like, you make the stupidest mistake, and if certain checkpoints weren't at the right, like, spot. Like, I hate when checkpoints are, like, say you have to push your box over. Then you're going to make me push this box over three times. Like, I want to kill myself. It was awful.
It, it, it was pretty bad, but yeah. it, it just that that was one bun and it got me upset. Mm -hmm. And another another motion, the jump in, just you could throw it out of the game because that was garbage. Yeah. Then we're gonna talk about shooting now. The shooting made no sense because the shooting you have to use the right analog stick, okay? The right analog stick to aim and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when you're aiming, it, it aims too quickly. You have to time it because yeah. sometimes it doesn't freeze and you're moving around like this. And the problem is if a shadow is coming towards you, what are you gonna do? Like, and there's one part where, there's one scene, you have to, he's like, oh, I have to run, run. And he's running, right? And you have to shoot the one that's right there. You could sometimes jump over a zombie, but majority of times you have to push them or do something. Mm -hmm. And I had to kill him on a run and I couldn't do it. Like, and so then I figure out that you could jump over him at a certain mm -hmm. angle. Yeah, I think like the only mechanic I actually did like that I think was interesting was like, say you'd be on top of like an object and the zombies be near you when you, you had that like whistle. You call them over. You hey, call them over and you jump over. over. I thought that was, that was pretty interesting, but it's like I felt like just like any other good mechanic, they didn't use it enough to their advantage. They used it to call that stupid rat guy. Yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna use it for some more interesting things. I feel they didn't do. After that, so those are two two control buttons I didn't like: the jump, the shooting, and the last mechanic I did not like: the fact that everyone else is moving in a three D environment. Okay, mm -hmm. everyone else is moving. Like the zombies, or sorry, the shadows are in the background. Okay, eating something, and then all of a sudden they come towards you, and you can't tell at what angle when you're running across if they're there yet or they're not there yet if they're in your way because sometimes I went past them and he grabbed me how could they grab me in the 3D world but yet I'm stuck in the 2D world that, that just that's something that just makes no sense if you're going to do it like that then they should be in the background over here and they should not be in front of me because sometimes they're behind me and in front of me and I can't tell at what point they're going to be right in front of, like right next to me so I didn't like that and just let you know, the, the creators of this game is uh, Tequila Works. And honestly, if they thought the jumping works, they must have been drinking a lot of tequila. Yeah. I, I, have, I can only imagine that they're drinking shots of tequila mm -hmm. while making this game. Because if they yeah. thought everything worked, the, the, the game, it's almost unplayable in certain parts. Yeah, and I think, I think every time you die in a the game, they took a shot of tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was their game, and they got real drunk, and then they finished it. <laughs> I think that's what, how you play this game, because... And it's funny because while I was recording a game, I actually drank a little bit before that. Yeah. So I was doing it the first night. Like, it, it just oh, got that's me That's fine. I, I think that's acceptable. <laughs> when you're playing this type of game, man, it, it's, it's brutal. It, 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 was, it was rough. And it, yeah. it got to the point where it was unenjoyable. It was not enjoyable. Yeah. And I, I, I love different types of games. I accept it. And I still, you know, beat it. You know, I understand. And that's probably the best thing about it. <laughs> it was a short game. So it was over. Yeah, it's magical. It, 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 and it felt like a long time, yeah. but it was over. I could go I back and beat it quicker than I did before yeah. with mm -hmm. less mistakes. But that's because now I know how the jump works. And now I can, like, I know the timing of the jump. And that's all it is. It's a lot of practice to yeah. do it the other way. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying you can make it work. Yeah. But I guarantee if you're going to go into it thinking like it's any other side scrolling game like mm -hmm. like you see something you think you can reach it no there's a certain way you have to press the jump and there's only one way to do it that's yeah. a, that's that's a problem like I, there's one point where the ladder when i'm trying to jump on a fire escape ladder i have to creep up mm -hmm. and keep creeping up creeping up and all of a sudden boom he jumped on the ladder you know but if i went a little too far he would have jumped off the the edge so so i mean at, at the end of the day i think like i had a nice concept but I mean, what would you want to see? I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but like, what would you want to see from like, say like a 2D, you know, side-scrolling like zombie game in this vein? Like, what would you th think that, you know, that like, obviously the controls were bad, the story was bad, but what would you like to see that you think would make things, something like this interesting? Things uh, that, this game had the mechanics that mm -hmm. I would want to see. Just, mm -hmm. I, I would want this game to be fixed up. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, there's there's no, no, no 3D. If you're going to make it 2D, make it the every character 2D, like in a 2D environment. Mm -hmm. The environment could be 3D in the background, yeah. but the characters cannot come from the background to the front. Mm -hmm. That's one huge flaw in the game because you can't do anything. Well, I, I think there's one game that I think uh, does it well. Uh, it's called Lone Survivor, where you could act, they do that, but you can actually hide in the back. So, like, yeah. say a zombie would come in front of you, you can hide behind yeah. and, like, like, and that's what I kind of think I would want from this type of game. Like, 
I would want like a, a Metroidvania type of game where like you're tr just trying to escape like some like fixed type of location in order to survive. And I think that would be interesting with this type of because I love the atmosphere and like the way the game looked, but just the mechanics were just horrible. I, I still think when you try to combine two D to three D, doesn't work sometimes when if it's not fair. Like mm -hmm. it, it mean that if the if the 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 non playable characters mm -hmm. can go in the background, you yeah. should be able to. Exactly. And if not, but I think it works best when both of you do not work right. there. Then it's just the background is three D in the three mm -hmm. D world. Yeah, yeah. Objects, it's just something for a look. I think objects or still you yeah. can make objects come into like the two D world, like mm -hmm. like things like set up traps. Like the traps stuff yeah, will yeah. still work, mm -hmm. but the actual characters come in because sometimes, like I said, the zombies will come from the background. And then all of a sudden they're in front of you yeah. when they weren't a second ago. Why? Because you turn around for a second to hit someone with an axe. Yeah. And then, not to mention the axe is flawed too because if you went down swipe with the axe, they will bounce back up. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you hit them on the ground and you don't kill them, they bounce back up with your hit. Yeah, I don't understand why you knock them down with an axe and then they come back up. But you have to hit them while they're on the ground. You have to hit them on the ground. And if you do it the wrong way, the wrong swipe, you can bounce them back up. And they'll be standing up attacking. I think it's a mechanic. And then you get bit. And then yeah. it's just fine. But <laughs> overall, this game had so many flaws, so many glitches. There'd be times where I understand that I couldn't even jump. It wouldn't let me jump. The button froze. So I, I just think this game is... I hate to say it. It's not even worth the $15. And I, I hate to be that guy to say it. But like yeah, I, I, I tried totally so hard. To try to like this game, but I I didn't like I didn't I didn't really like it. And, and it I feel sucks. like they positioned it to kind of be like the next Limbo, uh, next Sol Shadow Complex, but they they, it's they, a complete they didn't want that. They they wanted to say it's gonna beat out Walking Dead, like it was gonna be the next zombie craze, like it's gonna yeah. have a lot of fans, like it's gonna be like a cult classic where people are gonna be following it, yeah. and it, it just it, in my opinion it wasn't. So I'm sorry to be the guy to say that, but it really wasn't. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with uh, that game. So This is the one thing we agree on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, pretty much sorry about this. Sorry podcast. Yeah. The games are pretty... It's July and, you know, it's but, the, it's, it happens, man. The summer, you know. Usually summer arcade games are usually good, but uh, it's very, very disappointing. I mean, Tony Hawk and then this and what, what we have, Racketeer. I mean, it's, it's not going too well. So, but, we'll see. Brings us back to a happy moment now where we're going to be discussing instead of a debatable topic since we had enough depressing moments yeah, talking yeah. about the game itself. Games, we're not going to argue this time. We're going to sit back and we're going to talk about why we like video games so much and uh, pretty much bring bring back maybe the first moment you played a game, anything. and uh, Yeah, you go first. Just say talk about anything. You can talk mm -hmm. about... First game you ever played? What what brought you to this world of video games? So yeah, like well, I mean, it's kind of obvious. I mean, the first game most people played around our age group, uh, Super Mario Brothers, of course. First game I played, and I I think I, what I really liked about Super Mario Brothers was um, I I felt like it didn't, and it's kind of interesting too, because like nowadays that's actually something I don't like. And what I liked about Super Mario Brothers was it was really like. It was just purely mechanical. Like mm -hmm. it was just a purely mechanical game, and there wasn't really much like as far as a tutorial. You know, you kind of just like they just you're this is the game, mm -hmm. and it's like figure out what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what was the magic of that game. You know, in earlier games like Zelda and stuff like that, where it's like they didn't tell you what to do. Whereas like nowadays, it's kind of like. I feel like sometimes the, the game design is so bad, I kind of want them to tell me what to do, which is kind of interesting. But I do kind of see that happening now. Uh, also, don't forget, like back then, no internet. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. The only thing you had a Nintendo Power or mm -hmm. something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's it. There's the only way you can find and, out. And I think that's what was so magical. But I think the problem with that now is not that I don't like that. It's it's the whole entire thing that we're, you don't have freaking time to do really? it anymore. And that's what I think what, what kind of I wish I can get back. And I think that's what initially got me into games was just a wonder of like you you're in this world and you got to figure out what you need to do and, to beat it you know and it's like really challenging but you just keep going at it and I think like the cool thing when you're younger is like you have a lot more of a tolerance when you're younger to just play the same thing over and over again because I remember when I was younger like you only get like a couple of games a year you know you get for your birthday you get for Christmas so you just continue to play the game over and over again so you got better at it and beat it and you know mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, initially what I got into games, um, you know, but as I got a little bit older, I think, you know, your your tastes grow a little bit more and it's, 
it soon became uh, less about more mechanic based and it became about um, one uh, the thing I like the most about games is um, progressing a character and that's why kind of RPGs are kind of my you know go to genre nowadays you know shooters are starting to have that type of aspect too but I just like the the um, the th you know having uh, you know a character that you can like you know invest in and it gets better over time and you feel like you know you know something you can basically be proud of at the end of the day like you you spent so much time you know playing these games and like what you got to show for it I feel like that whole entire thing of you know developing that character is you know you feel like you know uh, I put this time into this character and you know I, I, f I feel this character is kind of like what I wanted it you know to be based on you know you know the type of skills I invested in mm. and so forth and also um, story which is another big thing why I like RPGs as well like I really like um, some, I really like the ability to make you know choices I think that's what really you know drives me in terms of story because you know it, you could have a great like movie and stuff like you could watch it but what I really like about games is the interactive element of it and I feel like stories I love when like not only if it's just a good linear story, but I also like a story. I even more I like a story where you, you feel like you make the choices and mm -hmm. you, you change the way the story um, you know ends up. So, what do you like about games? Uh, what's your uh, first memory, man? We're gonna do it's a, pretty much two memories that change mm -hmm. it all. First memory was like you said, uh, Nintendo. We grew up in the same around the same time, so uh, Super Mario Brothers was big. You know, I, I loved it, and like when I was young, I remember. Uh, my mom was like, "Oh, he's he's not gonna know how to you know play this stuff." And yeah, they yeah. gave it to me, and I, I beat it. I beat it like, the, and I was really young then. And I beat the game. I beat the game in the first week, within the first week. Mm -hmm. Just like you know, I sit down, and play straight yeah. through, and like it's funny because I, I used to do that all the time, and like got games. And I was very, I'm not gonna lie, I was very fortunate. Like we didn't have too much money, you know, growing up or anything. But I was very fortunate because I, I had almost every system there was. Every time it's a Christmas or something, I got a new system. Like mm -hmm. a lot of kids didn't get that, and like I was very fortunate to have you know parents that actually like here, here's a system. Every Christmas I expected, I didn't expect mm -hmm. it, but I was actually shocked that I got one. Cause I so never you, expected. So you never had to be uh, have the fanboyism when you were growing yeah. up, because right? you had both. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things I hated. <laughs> like I hated people had a Super Nintendo because I never had a Super yeah. Nintendo. I had a Genesis, mm -hmm. and like you're, I felt like you're always like having to like. You know, defend your system. Yeah. I, I hate. I hated that. Yeah. You know, like that's the thing. And I feel like that even nowadays, like I, even though I kind of hate that too, like with the whole entire like fanboy wars, I kind of understand it growing up because I'm like, yeah, I didn't have a Super Nintendo. Like for example, like uh, my dad originally had an Atari there in the household, mm -hmm. and then I got the Nintendo, so I was able to compare both. And then the next, the next stage of when it was uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis, and, like I was honest, Nintendo won out the whole war of the Atari and everything. And then Super Nintendo won out the war Genesis. Yeah. They really and there's some games that Genesis excelled, but in reality, mm -hmm. the, a lot of games glitched mm -hmm. out and they were slower in Genesis. Yeah, and, and the know what the interesting thing about Genesis though is like where like you could tell that obviously Super Nintendo was a better system because that pre basically branched off to where we are. You know, like a lot of those games, those franchises become either three D titles and a lot of the the spirit of like indie games is really based off the Super Nintendo yeah. era because it was the golden age yeah. basically whereas like you could kind of tell like a, a lot of the games I want like sequels to is uh like um you know uh like Genesis titles like rare Genesis titles that came out mm -hmm. and uh you know like Vector Man <laughs> like all these like crazy different games but at the end of the day it's like look at what happened with you know Sega it's a freaking publisher and Sonic has some of the worst games out there. You know, it's just really unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I, I like, I appreciate all the games, stuff like that. But back to the, the Nintendo, it was like when Super Mario Bros. 3 came out, that's where, like, I really started to understand games more. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it because those games back then, that's why I collect retro games stuff. Mm -hmm. I still collect retro games because those games back then was all about timing. It's about memorization. You memorize things, you memorize jumps, you memorize everything. Mm -hmm. And I had a bet with my, my cousin when I was younger that uh, I could go back and I remembered Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm like, I could beat at least the first two levels, um, memorizing it, memorizing it without looking at the TV screen blindfolded, that I could beat the first two levels of Super Mario Bros. 3 just by the sound of it. And he said, there's no way. And I did not only beat the first two levels, I made it all the way to 
the first castle and I beat the whole thing without dying just because I memorized the jumps and the timing with the sound. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, I know people are like, oh, that's 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 bull. But no, it's, I, when I was younger, I did that because I played it so much that you remember the sound. Like everything was the same. Everything was all about timing and jumping, and that's all it was. You know, there wasn't like things where like nowadays where sometimes it might slightly be a different outcome or. You know, they, they put code in where something different might happen. It's mm -hmm. randomized. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that back then. Back then, majority of the time, it was one set way, and it was all about timing. And you had to know the timing, and you could learn the patterns and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, patterns was key for those old games, and that's why I liked it. Mm -hmm. But I think when it moving forward to PlayStation, like, one Christmas morning, when I woke up, like, I, I literally thought that, they kept saying they're gonna get it. They're gonna. They're, they're not gonna get it. It's too expensive. We have no money. You know, you, you can't. They're being honest with me. We have no money for that. You guys really aren't gonna have a big Christmas or anything. So I'm like, I really didn't think too much at Christmas. I'm like, all right, I'm probably just gonna get clothes and stuff. But I couldn't mm -hmm. blame it. Every time I get something, yeah. and then I was. That was the only time I was shocked that I got a, a PlayStation the day it came out. I got the first, the when it, the new PlayStation, the PlayStation One when it came out, I opened it, and I got that. And then later on, I was able to get Metal Gear Solid. And that was the game that changed everything for me. Because mm -hmm. that, that showed that it wasn't just about side scroll, it wasn't about 3D game. It was it was a, a mixture of everything plus a story, yeah. plus a cutscene. Like cutscenes. They yeah. made it feel like a movie. And that was the first time like you combine movie with video game. Mm -hmm. And that's what Kojima wanted. He wanted to be a director. But he always said yeah. he wanted to make movies and that Metal Gear Solid changed everything. I think it changed games today. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because a lot of games go that route. A lot of games mm -hmm. have cutscenes. A lot of games like to make it feel like a movie. Yeah. And Uncharted is one of the, yeah, absolutely. the, the top, I think, the mm -hmm. ones that are doing it right yeah, now. God of War. Yeah. yeah. God, well, actually, most of Sony franchises. Sony's, yeah. Yeah, most of Sony's franchises. And, and it's kind of funny because they went that direction where clearly they were trying to be Nintendo with yeah. the Crash Bandicoot kind of yeah. style. Yeah. Which is kind of never, you know, never really you know, came off the way <laughs> that they wanted to, which is, that's the good thing about it, though. I think that's what made Sony, you know, not Sega, where yeah. Sega, was, I think, was trying to be too much like Nintendo, and Sony actually found their, you know, an adult audience that wanted these type of games, and, you know, that's why, you know, they're in the position they are in today. Which, real quick, since you went to Sega, I just want to throw in, Sega Dreamcast is one of the most underrated systems, and it was one of the best systems, if not graphically intense and everything mm -hmm. for the system it was. They had some really good games, but the problem why they failed is not just because of PlayStation 1, is because of the fact that um, they were easily downloadable to burn it, and they, they, everyone stole it. They were pirated, the most pirated mm -hmm. game system there was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason why they failed. It had nothing to do with the system, because honestly, if you look at all the true fighting games, Marvel vs. Capcom, mm -hmm. all those games were first ported onto that system. Soul Calibur, they all came from the Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't remember that. Yeah. But they were originally on Dreamcast and then they were put to PlayStation mm -hmm. 1 after Dreamcast. It's, it's crazy how much, it, there was a lot of piracy during that era too. Because I remember everyone had the mod chips from yeah. the Playstations and stuff like that. So it was kind of rampant, but I think it did take that system It, it killed the Dreamcast. Yeah. The Dreamcast yeah. didn't have any protection for it. In, mm -hmm. the, in the system, you could hack it and you could just do whatever. Yeah. So. That was just a little side note, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I love games today, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to see that's why you like games, and that's why we're here in front of the camera, yeah. not because we just do it to do it, we do it because it's enjoyable, so. No, we do it to make money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. we're, we're rich, can't you see? Bling, bling, like, yeah, yeah, right. Dude, I'm rolling now with like Ferrari every day, oh, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. This guy, look at he's kind of rich. I was wearing a little yellow uh, preppy. Oh, yeah, yeah, my, be my beamer's in the. <laughs> it's in the driveway, hey. and uh, you know I'm driving whips, on. picking up chicks at the same damn time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's cut this. It's getting a little too long right now. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's it. That's pretty much the end of our podcast, episode seventeen. So we're getting up there in numbers over there. It's pretty yeah. good. So what what we're gonna expect the next couple of weeks? Uh, first, you're going to see some videos of me uh, with a new, a brand new series. It's going to show retro games, retro pickups that I have. And uh, one, one of those videos, I will show you like a walkthrough of like all the ones I have games, but I have way too many right now. Like, just alone for Nintendo, I counted, I was doing inventory before the computer crashed. I, 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 maybe that's why I crashed. I don't know. I have uh, exactly 99 Nintendo games, and that's not including the new shipment, so... 
I have like a new shipment of 15 coming in, so yeah, 114 uh, for just Nintendo games. And I got a bunch of Super, I even more for Super Nintendo. And then Sega, I have a whole bunch, so I have a lot of games. Yeah, so it's like Antiques Roll Show for games. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I, <laughs> I have a lot of games, dude. So that's why you'll be seeing a lot of the different games, but mostly the series is going to be about games I recently picked up. So anything I picked up, the, you know, yard sale or flea market or something like that. Or eBay, even eBay, that I'll show you guys. So you'll see that video. Yeah, if these it, people find out, they're gonna kill you. Uh, <laughs> these people you're buying these games for, they don't know they are. The, the one, uh, this is real quick. I bought a Flintstones Nintendo game, right? The the one that's uh, right now it's it's estimated like about five hundred something dollars worth, and I bought that at a yard sale from these kids, and like, I felt so bad. So like they had they asked for like two dollars for it, and I gave them ten dollars. Well, like, oh, here you go, keep the change. They're like, oh really? They're so excited. So I felt so bad because I knew that the games were like five hundred something, because it's a blockbuster exclusive game. But I digress. You know, it's whatever. You know, happens. Right. So we got that coming up. Uh, the games. Games. Now. We yeah. got. You're doing. Uh, Sleeping Dogs and Dark Siders too. You'll be, definitely be seeing uh, Sleeping Dogs first. Can get that out of the way. And then uh, I'm not going to be doing another game for another three weeks. So I have pretty much three weeks left for to beat Darksiders, which I might need all those three <laughs> weeks. I think it's good. <laughs> so, so, and I'll be doing uh, Transformers uh, for the Cybertron, and I'll also be doing uh, Guild Wars 2. And for, so that's basically it for all of us. I mean, it's, finally the drought is ending up, right. and we're getting into the fall season where, you know, that's the most popular... Uh, Season for all these new releases. This so. is Michael Bay's Transformers, right? This is like actual. Transformers. No, no, it's, it's Transformers. Oh, right, cool. So it's real Transformers, not like the. No, no. No, no, no Mega no. Fox. I mean, uh, it should be nice if she was a playable character. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll play. I'll maybe, play. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I didn't pre order the game. Maybe she's a multiplayer unlock if you order from GameStop. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a plug, man. Not a plug. <laughs> DLC coming soon. <laughs> Mega Fox, that little character. She has a separate co op campaign you can play. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's end this video before people leave. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's it. So, uh, definitely expect those uh, games coming up soon that we'll be doing walkthroughs. And uh, as always, you will be seeing like the games that we did on top. And uh, go check out those walkthroughs that we did. So, this is Hector. This is Drew. And we're from Not Too Entertainment. Not too dirty, not too nerdy. Did I just say right? Not too nerdy entertainment. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. it. Yeah, cut. See you, YouTube.